Fun Facts presents the 1970 Mercury Cougar Eliminator, a classic muscle car that we all forgot about. Introduced back in 1969, had a production year of two years, 69 through 1970. I'm excited. I hope you're excited. Let's get started now. The 1970 Cougar Eliminator might not have been as popular as its Mach 1 Mustang cousin, but it was just as muscular. One of the most unique automotive markets of the 1960s was the pony car segment. Named for the first of the breed, Ford's 1964 Mustang, the cars competing for consumer attention all had the same long hood, short deck profile established by the Mustang. At the height of the market, the pony car segment accounted for almost 10% of automotive sales. It was an important and lucrative part of Detroit's product lineup. Consequently, every car maker except Cadillac and Lincoln had field a pony car by the late 1960s. Aside from the Plymouth Barracuda, Ford owned the market until 1967 when Chevrolet and Pontiac launched the Camaro and the Firebird. It was only arch rival GM that entered the pony car wars in 1967. Ford management decided that cooperate cousin Mercury should get a piece of the action as well. That decision launched the, Mo the Mercury Cougar, an upscale version of the Mustang that came standard with hidden headlamps, sequential tail lamps, more luxurious interior appointments, and styling. Overall, the Cougar shared virtually nothing with the Mustang. If the Ford model was the blue collar sporty car, then the Mercury's pony car was a luxury GT touring machine. Its top of the line RX-7 introduced in the mid 1967 offered wood grain instrument panels, upgrade upholstery, and a four speed gearbox. There was even a GT package that included a 320 horsepower, 390 cubic inch engine with low restriction exhaust, power disc brakes, handling package, and wide oval tires. Hardly one would call a muscle car, but the GT was a nicely packaged performance car. Mercury was reluctant to build up the Cougar and take on the muscle market, a place where rivals like the SS396 Camaro and Ram Air 400 Firebird had already begun staking territory. By 1969, the Mustang was knuckling against these two with its 428 Cobra Jet Mach 1 and Mercury could do no longer sit on the sidelines. By mid-year, the division had jumped into the fray with the Eliminator. The name was taken from a Cougar show and from the 1968 Cougar Eliminator funny car driven by Dino Don Nicholson. Management phantom that racing exposure could heighten Mercury's profile with young performance buyers. They were the ones who drove the hot cars, right? <clears throat> Dressed out in Bright colors, blacked out grills, body stripes, spoilers, and decals. The Eliminator was based on the standard Cougar and came with a choice of engines from mild to wild. The standard block was a 351 CID V8, producing 290 horsepower at 4,800 RPMs. Engine options ranged from the high revving Boss 302 to a pair of heavy breathing 428 cubic inch Cobra jets with or without ram air induction, both producing 335 horsepower at 5200 RPM. And the old reliable 390 now in its final year producing 320 horsepower at 4600 RPM. Sales were small, only 2250 were produced 
during the remainder of the 1969 model year. Mercury turned up the heat for the 1970. The standard engine was the 351 four-barrel V8. Either Windsor or Cleveland, depending on availability. The 351 Cleveland, Cleveland was the more desirable of the two, thanks to its canted valve positioning that permitted better cylinder flow. The Windsor was rated at 290 horsepower at 4,800 RPM, and the Cleveland at 300 horsepower at 5,400 RPM. And also standard was the 3.25 to 1 rear axle and a performance handling package with 570 14s with lettered tires, white lettered tires. The Boss 302 engine could also be checked off on an order sheet. This was the same engine as in the 302 Boss Mustang with an output of 290 horsepower at 5,800 RPM. Top of the heat was the Cobra Jet 428, produced 335 horsepower at 5,200 RPM. The cold air package Cobra Jet was rated the same as the non-RAM Air CJ. At least one eliminator was equipped with the Boss 429 that was installed in a limited run of Mustangs to the engine for the NASCAR racing. With any engine choice, a floor-mounted three-speed manual transmission was standard. The C6 automatic or the four-speed manual box was optional. The Eliminator interior was offered in 10 different colors for the 1970, up from seven from the year before. Buyers had a choice of standard vinyl, comfort weed vinyl, black vinyl, a white hound's tooth, and standard for the Eliminator were high back bucket seats, black grain instrument panel, 6,000 RPM tack, 8,000 for the Boss 302 equipped models, and novel elapsed time, clock, and full instrumentation. The manual transmission cars, a Hurst shifter with aluminum T handle, was standard while automatic transmission models received the simulated wood grain shift knob when the floor mounted transmission was ordered. The exterior was modified for the 1970 with the eliminator grills blacked out and a black center stripe running the grill split up the center of the hood to the blacked out hood scoop. Below the front bumper was a full length black fiberglass chin spoiler. Along the upper belt line, a trio of stripes reached from the front fender to the end of the quarter. The standard dual outside rear view mirrors also sported a race style look. Next to the rear side marker lamp was an eliminator decal on either side. While the eliminator had all the right stuff to qualify it as a muscle car, or a muscular pony car. <clears throat> Wait, it lacked was image. Image was, wasn't built by painting on graphics and spraying on loud paint. Image was earned every Saturday night on the streets of America from Woodland Avenue in Detroit to Van Nuys Boulevard in Southern California. It was established how many lanes you could beat the next guy in the next light or at the local drag strip when winning your class for top eliminator. This was Mustang, Camaro, Firebird, and Cuda territory. And on a lucky night, a really lucky night, an AMX or two, that was the eliminator's problem. Well, if you found yourself this far into the video, we'd certainly like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. And if you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up because it really does help our channel. And if you like our channel, please subscribe because we're going to be doing all the muscle cars, the funny cars, the sports cars, the high red cars, the supercars, all the autoramas. We'll be doing 
various car shows, hot rods, custom cars. So a little bit of everything for everybody. We again like to thank you for taking the time out of your day. And thank you. And always, always, always take good care.